Hello, hello. Well, hello everyone. I am Jesus Soto. I work as a software engineer for Canonical. And today I'm going to talk about a topic that excites us a lot. And it's been trending in the last, well, in the recent years. And it's, well, gaming. Uh, what's happening? Well, most of you are aware that there's been an increase in the market share of Steam users for the Linux operating system. And this is basically due to, well, one very important factor is the Steam Deck. Uh, the Steam Deck runs a specific version of Arch, uh, Steam OS, but it basically has been pushing the development of compatibility tools and games in general for the Linux platform. And here we have some numbers on how it's uh, it's being seen uh, we're seeing the the increases in in proton db proton db is a compatibility layer for windows games to run on linux this number is growing every week or uh, we see the the verified games increasing and this will continue to grow but uh, well this has a, a a downside of course uh, Compatibility layers aren't always working like they should, and there's uh, specific ed ca edge cases for some games that don't run. So we can also start to focus on native games. Uh, on, on Linux, we have three different engines. Two of the most important that are Unity and Unreal, the most professional ones. Uh, those two provide export targets for Linux. And there's also even some engines outside of Linux, like the CryEngine, that provide also an export template for Linux. But here I want to talk about an, a very important one that is Godot. Godot, what is it and why should we use it? Well, it's a free, all-in-one, cross-platform game engine that makes it easy to create 2D and 3D video games. It has an intuitive, uh, scene-driven design, coding tools. We're going to go through that in a few minutes. Uh, it's a powerful engine for both 3D and 2D uh, with specialized workflows. Uh, Cross-platform support with only one project, which means that you can develop the video game on different platforms. Like you can grab your project and work on it on Windows, work on it on Mac, work on it on Linux, even on the web, and then export to any uh, target platform. And well, our favorite part is completely free and open source. Well, one important question is, should I use the default version or the mono version? What's the difference between those? Well, the GD script, it's, a, it's the built-in language for programming. It's a, it provides a very uh, close, tight integration to the engine. And it's similar to Python, so it's very easy to start coding in GD script. And the other option is mono. Mono offers the .NET compatibility tool then there you can use the your libraries that you know for C Sharp and start coding with performance boosts. Um, or there's even more options. I mean, you can also extend it through different uh, programming languages of your choice, or you can modify the engine itself because it's open source. A few weeks ago, Godot 4 was released. Uh, what's new? Well, there's actually a lot of different uh, upgrades in the engine. There's an, uh, an article by, uh, posted by themselves on what what's the new things in, in, the, in this version. There's a lot of enhancements in 2D, 3D, shaders, physics engines, animations, editors, and the GD extension that is basically an, an API for you to build engine models uh, with almost native com compatibility. So the important question, is it as good as Unreal? Uh, can we ditch Unreal and start coding with Godot? Well, here I posted two, two different examples. One is of a YouTuber, stay-at-home dev, that was able to create a video game just while Unreal was loading and compiling shaders. And the other one is an article by It's Foss that is basically calling all developers to take a look at Godot and what it offers. The truth is, is it, well, that both are different things, right? Unreal is tailored for some specific projects, while Godot is for uh, another type of project. It's like trying to compare the Ubuntu server image with the Ubuntu desktop image. I mean, both are great, but but both are for different purposes. Uh, Godot could be used for a quick uh, 
a template, a uh, proof, proof of concept, or for indie game development, while Unreal serves for more, uh, well, for AAA games, uh, very complex projects with a lot of textures, which, I mean, it doesn't necessarily mean that Godot can handle that, and it doesn't, ser doesn't necessarily mean that indie devs shouldn't look into Unreal, but it's, it, it, uh, th those are different tools with different capabilities. A little quick tour of the UI. Uh, on the top you have the toolbar, the most common buttons that, that you always have, copy, paste, uh, uh, undo, uh, undo, redo, project settings, debugger, and the play buttons. Then you have the scene. In the scene you can place notes, more on the notes uh, in the next slides, but basically are the elements of the game. File system is to provide access, you to, to give you access to your system, for where you have your textures, your assets. Output is like a console where you can print messages and read what's happening. Viewport, that is basically where all your objects are placed in 3D space and you can move them around, uh, rotate them, and look what's happening. And the inspector, that is basically a menu where you can modify the node properties. Uh, where is the, the object, uh, the size, the rotation, different properties, materials, whatever uh, that you want to tweak around, that's the inspector for. A little bit on the basics, it's a scene and node-based development. So you can create an asset as a scene, for example, an enemy, a Goomba. You can place there uh, all of your nodes that you require and then instance it all the times you need on a different scene. And these are one of the most common types of nodes. The mesh instance or sprite is how your asset is going to look. Character body is a, is a body that can be controlled by an input. Uh, collision shapes, there are basically the shapes that will define how objects interact into the scene, the depending on its shape. Rigid bodies, there are objects that follow the laws of physics. Static bodies, there are objects that won't follow the laws of physics, basically for the floor or for something that is, isn't moving on the scene. Camera for rendering and for your uh, character view. Lights to illuminate the scene and control nodes, basically for UI elements. If you want to have a progress bar or a health bar or your coins or your health points, you can use the elements in the control category. This is a, a quick example on how to map your controls. It's a GD script, uh, script. And then you have your input mappings where you can define different actions with different key bindings and then just reference them in your script. Uh, well, we also had to talk, we, we wanted to talk about the Godot Snap because it's available in the Snap Store and give a quick example on how easy it is to create a Snap when you have a binary artifact. You can pull it directly from the web, copy it to the uh, insta install directory and copy the desktop files. I mean, of course, you still have to define your plugs, your apps, uh, maybe some layout bindings and this type of things, but uh, project-wise, you just have to copy your binary artifact into the installation directory, and that's all. Well, uh, there's no questions, but I'll be around if you want to chat about the Godot engine, and maybe uh, start developing our own games for the Linux platform. Thank you. <laughs>